Now it's time for an amazing story of how uh, some banks wind up controlling our markets and driving up prices and totally screwing you over. That's fun. Uh, we'll show you what they do and how they do it, which is really interesting, so stay tuned for that. So it's going to start with a crazy story about aluminum. Goldman Sachs decided that they were going to buy Metro International Trade Services. They're in the aluminum business. And they were going to do something fascinating. Basically, they were going to slow down how quickly they got aluminum to the end users like the beer companies, Coca-Cola, etc. And by doing that, they would make billions of dollars. How? All right, let me explain. So first of all, uh, when they bought them, there was about 50,000 tons of aluminum in 2008 that they stored, this company did, right? Uh, and by 2010, they had made that 850,000 tons, and now it's one and a half million tons. Now, why are they bothering to store so much aluminum and how? Well, it turns out the more aluminum that they have access to, the more they can control the markets. And in fact, they give incentives for people to store the aluminum in their warehouses up to $230 extra per ton, so people go, okay, fine, take my aluminum. So, but they're way losing money with those incentives. How are they gonna make it up? Well, this is how they're gonna make it up. They have 27 industrial warehouses in the Detroit area, and they, have, they move about 1,500 pound bars of metal each day. But they don't move them from the warehouses to the end user. No, they move them warehouse to warehouse to warehouse. They keep moving in between those 27 warehouses. And guys that work in the area, interviewed by the New York Times, they say, I mean, look, we suit up, it's a job, man. <laughs> but we say hi to each other on the way to the warehouses, and then we take, go back, and we're going in circles and circles and circles. So what's the result of that? Three years ago, before Goldman Sachs had bought this company, the amount of time that it took for someone who had bought aluminum to actually receive their shipment was six weeks. Okay, that makes sense. Today, it's a 16, not week, it's a 16 month wait. 16 months. So why? Well, it turns out that when you, of course, no one's surprised by this, decrease, artificially decrease the supply of aluminum in the market, what happens? The price goes up. Now it only goes up by a little bit. It goes up by one, tenth of a cent. One tenth of a cent for every aluminum can's purchase price? Now that doesn't seem like much and often goes unnoticed. Except of course for the bottom line of Goldman Sachs. So how many uh, cans does it uh, affect? 90 million aluminum cans are used each year in the US. But cans are not the only things that, are, that use aluminum. There are tons of aluminums used in cars, electronics, house siding, etc. So the cost, the additional cost to the consumers because of that one tenth of one cent in each can, for example, is two dollars for every 35 pounds of aluminum used to make a thousand cans. But this is interesting, for every car there is an additional twelve dollar cost that was not there before because of the aluminum used in the car. They already had aluminum price in the car. This is twelve dollars extra on top of that because Goldman Sachs slowed down the shipping of aluminum. Just a tenth of a cent per can makes a giant difference. How much of a difference? In the end, over these last three years that Goldman Sachs has been just running that company, that all they do is store that aluminum, five billion dollars they made over the last three years from just this scam. Five billion dollars. That's $5 billion extra all of us paid to them for no reason. The price of aluminum was not actually higher in terms of the production costs. There's no reason why you should have paid that. Just, oh sorry, we can't get the aluminum to you. <laughs> You're gonna have to pay a little more. So, uh, even the managing director at Harbor Aluminum Intelligence, and I'm amused that there's such a company, says it's a totally artificial cost. It's a drag on the economy and everyone pays for it. So that's not the only way they made money out of this interesting way. And I keep calling it a scam because it is. It's not, oh, they had to do it because of production costs. It's, some, it's a decision they artificially made to screw you out of money. But it's not illegal. That's the funny part. Not illegal. We'll show you how they did it in a second. But on top of that, not only did they make money by increasing the price of aluminum, they also, they're, since they're banks, bet on the commodities market. 
but they have their information because they're in the commodities market. And just so you know, it didn't used to be this way. They deregulated the banks and let them buy whatever they want. In the past, a bank couldn't bet on the commodities market and own a piece of the commodities market. That gives them an artificial uh, advantage. It's basically like insider trading. Now, let me let uh, the New York Times explain here. They say, by controlling warehouses, pipelines, and ports, banks gain valuable intelligence, uh, market intelligence, investment analysts say. That, in turn, can give them an edge when trading commodities. So they make money from the extra production costs that they artificially inflated. They make money from the trading because they have the insider information on it. They just keep making money. Now, wait a minute, though. There's somebody supposed to look out for us on this, right? There's supposed to be some sort of regulation. Well, who does the regu regulation in this industry? It's the London Metal Exchange. So how did they get them to play ball? And this is brilliant. The London Metal Exchange, which oversees 719 warehouses around the globe, has not always been an impartial arbiter. It receives 1% of the rent collected by its warehouses worldwide. And until last year, it was owned by members including Goldman, Barclays, and Citigroup. Well, that's brilliant. They bought their regulators. And they cut them in on the deal. They say, and now whenever they go to make a regulation change, and those three banks wound up selling it to another interest. And now even that new person who runs the London Metal Exchange, or the new company, it's like, man, I don't know, man, 1% of our money is a lot of money. It's millions of dollars. If we actually do our job and we regulate them, we're going to lose that money. Brilliant. Brilliant.